Welcome to another edition of Careers That Matter. Today I'm joined by Rene Brossard, who is the spokesperson, and I guess you're in charge of communications at the Montreal Economic Institute. Welcome. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Tell me about your job. What do you do? So, so what I do is, uh, so as, as you said, I, I take care of the communications department for a think tank called the Montreal Economic Institute. So the way we work is that we have uh, a lot of very skilled researchers that uh, do research on public policy uh, in Canada on things such as healthcare, finance, energy. Uh, and uh, my colleagues and I in the uh, communications department uh, work on popularizing that. Uh, we work on making it accessible. Uh, so we do that through uh, press releases that we send to uh, media outlets, uh, but also by organizing interviews, uh, you know, such as this one, I guess. Uh, but to talk to talk about the uh, the policy propositions that uh, that we have, uh, and make sure that Canadians have, uh, I guess, the what we believe to be the best uh, policy uh, propositions to uh, make sure that we have a more prosperous society. So uh, do you need to have an economics uh, background yourself to be able to uh, take on this role and to be able to communicate effectively uh, what it is that the Institute uh, produces as far as reports are concerned? I would say it certainly helps, uh, or at the very least having an interest in economics. Uh, myself, I do not have a background in economics. I am a business major. Uh, but I have had uh, previous employment where I did some policy analysis and budget analysis. Uh, so I have that sort of background that helps. Uh, but it's also, uh, of course, we have some very talented economists on our research team. Uh, we have some people with PhDs, some professors that work with us. We've got some on-staff researchers as well uh, that are very knowledgeable in their field. Uh, so I would say for somebody that does communications uh, on this, it, it helps to have that background that we can understand the studies properly and find the right way to popularize them, but it is not mandatory. So what does a typical day look like for you? Like, what are the kinds of duties that you have to take, uh, like, uh, take in, uh, address, uh, move forward? Um... So the way it looks like, I guess the first thing in the morning is reading the news. Uh, we, we do a press review. We have an internal press review process that we do. Uh, which means that I spend about uh, an hour perusing through six different newspapers. I've got another colleague that does another six. So it does. It, it's a good way to get at least a good grasp of what's going on in Canada. Uh, and then from there, we decide, we check if there's anything we need to react on. So if there's uh, something where our, one of our studies was mentioned or where uh, it is something that affects one of the areas we, we study, uh, we'll see if we put out something in the media, if we uh, simply if we take one of our previous studies and make it more accessible so that it can inform the public uh, on those uh, on those things. Uh, we'll also see what we can do on social media. Uh, part of communicating, of course, is our relations relations with traditional media outlets uh, and organizing interviews uh, with the press. Uh, but we also want to make sure that our information is as widely available as possible. So we'd have uh, a strong social media presence. Um, and then, of course, there's a lot of writing, a lot of reading. Uh, there's We write a lot of opinion pieces that get published in, uh, in newspapers. We write a lot of press releases. We write a lot of, uh, of research papers as well. Uh, so there's quite a lot of writing. It's If you like writing as I do, it's a pretty fun job. Do you also have to manage relationships with a wide variety of media outlets? Because if you don't have that relationship, um, how, you, how are you going to be able to expand your distribution channels? Absolutely. It's, it's a very important part of our job. Uh, and we, we try to, part of, of managing those relationships are simply to be very responsive. Uh, you know, our goal is uh, to help journalists in what they do and uh, when they come to us asking us questions, they also help us in what they do. So it's a sort of, uh, it, it's, a, it's a relationship that benefits both of us in, in this way. Uh, so we try to be very responsive, respond to their requests fast, but also very accurately to make sure that the information we send uh, is as accurate as, uh, as humanly possible. Uh, so that's that's a good part of it. It's a fun part as well, but it, it again it involves a lot of writing. It's sending a lot of emails, uh, a decent amount of talking to on the phone, 
Uh, but it's it's all it's always fun to have these opportunities to chat with people from different backgrounds, from different parts of the country, and also discover what's happening there. You know, whether whether we're talking to a local reporter in Montreal or somebody uh, as far as well Vancouver today or St. John's Newfoundland sometimes as well. Uh, it's it's fun to get an understanding of what's going on in their parts of the country, in their parts of the world, uh, and how uh, the policy the, the policy research process that we do uh, can have an effect uh, on them and their local areas. So what is your biggest challenge uh, as far as your job is concerned? And how, how do you, from a, a mindset perspective, go about trying to address that challenge on a daily basis? I would say uh, one of our biggest challenge uh, is always the issue of popularization, uh, because we've got some researchers that can uh, that can do tremendous things. They do very uh, complex papers. They know they know their stuff well enough uh, to uh, have a good understanding on very complex topics. But it's also it's understandable that not everybody has uh, you know eight hours a day to spend working on economics, furthering their understanding of economics. So we want to make that stuff as accessible as possible, and that's that's always a challenge uh, because sometimes there's some very complicated concepts, some very complicated terms, some very complicated theories that we want to boil down uh, into something that is much more accessible, much more digestible. In, in a sense, uh, I guess the mindset, sorry, that second part of your question about the, the mindset. Uh, uh, we use food. Sort of ask yourself if you had to explain it to your best friend how we do, well, how we do, do it. And that's how we try to go at it. So we don't want to talk down to people. We want to make sure that we're staying at the same level as they are, but that we make uh, some very complex topics accessible to them. So uh, let's sort of rewind in your career. Uh, where did you attend secondary school? Oh, secondary school was at uh, Collège Régional Centre in Montreal. Uh, but that was, that was years and years ago. Uh, but then I had CJAP University at uh, UCAM, where I studied business. Uh, but did a lot of volunteering as well with some uh, student movements, uh, some student political movements. And that's sort of how I started getting involved uh, in the, the the free market, limited government uh, movement uh, in Canada. So you kind of anticipated my question in, in some ways. <laughs> <laughs> but was as you started to venture into your post-secondary education, did you have a clear idea of what it was that you wanted to do that would lead to the kind of position that you're in now? Or are you there because of a series of opportunities that arose as you worked your way through different positions? I believe it's a mix of both. Uh, I, I had always been drawn to politics and policy and economics. Uh, and what I particularly like about where I am right now and the, the, uh, the positions and opportunities I've had throughout my career is that I've always been in a nonpartisan sphere. Uh, personally, what matters to me is not the color of the tie of the guy that's in office, but rather the policies that they put forward. Uh, and being in a nonpartisan environment, uh, whether it is with or advocacy organizations or a think tank like the MEI today, uh, allows me to uh, to actually to to make sure that what I'm advocating for is not so much getting the right person uh, in office as it is about making sure the best policies get passed. Uh, so. To, to answer your question, there's there's been that that ideal, which is it is something I wanted to do, something that very that I was, I was very interested in, but there's also been a little bit of luck uh, in finding right opportunities. Uh, I got involved in a uh, nonpartisan uh, youth movement called Generation Screwed uh, back in uh, university, uh, and from there it introduced me to that nonpartisan sphere uh, of politics. Uh, and I was able to uh, get some more opportunities through there. Uh, at some point, running Generations True, but then joining uh, an advocacy organization called the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, uh, and then progressively working my way to uh, doing communications at the Montreal Economic Institute. Wow. What would you say was the most important uh, characteristic or personality trait that you possess that has helped you as you move forward in your career? You know, that's a tough question. I, 
I'm I'm typically one to find my flaws uh, much easier than I find my qualities. So that's that's a rather tough one. Um, but I would say I I like to I like to be a bit of a I think I'm I think I'm usually quite quick on my feet. Uh, and and for something like this in communications, uh, you know, there sometimes somebody's gonna have, ask a question that's a bit of a curveball. You're not exactly sure where it came from. You still have to find a way to answer it. You still have to find a way to uh, answer it accurately with uh, with proper data, but in a way that is also uh, that that is also close to your original message, to the things you advocate for, to the ideas you want to put forward. So being quick on being quick on one's feet is certainly something that helps. Well, it's clearly a position that you enjoy because you exude uh, an, an amount of enthusiasm uh, in your delivery of information, and you do it very well. Uh, so thank you very much for giving us a glimpse into into you uh, and your your world. Well, thank you for the opportunity, and you're absolutely right. I feel like I've been going from dream job to dream job. I, I sometimes have to pinch myself in the morning because of that. Aren't you fortunate? Thank you for your time.